Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how you can take questions that you've compiled in a Word document and import them into Moodle all at once to put inside your quiz bank. Now this format is very specific, so you have to follow the instructions really carefully, so that way you make sure that Moodle can read the format correctly and import your questions the right way. So I have my Word document open and ready to go. And the first thing you want to make sure you do is number your questions. So I have number one and I'm going to put a space here and start writing my questions. So this is a multiple choice question and I'm going to say, what color is the sky? Then I have to put the answer choices for this question. Now it's important to note that the answer choices must be in capital letters, not the text itself, just A, B, C, D, and however many other choices you have. So let me show you what I mean. Now if I press enter and I go to put my answer choices, automatically my Microsoft Word is formatted to choose a lowercase a. Now there is an option here in the top where I can choose for my numbering options, capital A, B, and C. If you don't have that option, you don't feel comfortable using that option, you can write in the letter capital A, capital B, capital C. Now notice that it says A period, and now I want to put my answers next to it. So we're going to write four choices for this, and we'll just write pink, green, blue, and red. Now notice that because I'm using the formatting option here on my computer, it automatically goes to the next letter and capitalizes it for me. So now we have to write down what the correct answer is. So I wanna press enter a few times so that way I have no formatting and I want to write answer. Now notice the word answer must be in all capital letters and then you just put the correct answer. So I'm going to keep this capitalized and I want to write the letter C because that's the correct answer. So now we're going to do another question. So we're gonna do number two and my computer automatically continues the format of numbering. So I just put number two and let's do who was the first president of the United States. I'm going to press enter again and tab so that way my letter choice is A and I want to write in my answer choices now. So I've written all of my answer choices and now just as before, I want to press enter a few times so where I don't have any formatting and I want to write answer in all capital letters and put the correct answer and in this case that would be A. Now you might have true and false questions that you want to do this with as well. And the format is very similar, but there is a very important difference here. So I'm going to press enter, do number three. So for this, you just want to write the true and false statement. So I've written the statement, the human body has 201 bones, and I wanna give the options of true or false. But the difference here is instead of doing A period, B period, you want to do A parentheses, B parentheses. So I'm going to show you that here. So I'm just going to press enter here and you'll notice when I tab over, it continues the formatting from before with the A period, B period, but I don't want that for this since it's a true and false question. So to make things easier on myself, I'm just going to click off the number formatting for now and just do the format that I need, which is A parentheses. And we're just going to write true and then B parentheses, we can write false. So in this case, the answer is going to be false and we're going to follow the same process as before. So I press enter twice there so that way it just gives me the ability to write something new and not continue the numbering. So I'm going to write answer and the answer in this case is false. So now we have a few questions here. What I would recommend is probably writing all of your multiple choice questions first and then maybe continuing with your, uh, your true and false. That way the formatting is easier to follow as you go through your entire document. So what we wanna do is save this document now and it's important that you save it the right way. So here at the top, I'm going to click on save and I wanna save this as my midterm exam. And now you could save this normally to your computer if you like by just saving it as midterm exam in the regular file format. I would recommend you doing that so you have a copy of the original quiz before you change the file format. So we're going to save it as midterm exam first and click on save. And now we're going to save it again. So I'm going to go to file, save as, and I want to keep it as midterm exam, but instead of file format, dot doc, I want to change this to a plain text format, so a dot txt. So now I have my file format that has changed to this new plain text format, and I'm going to save it. And then you'll see this file conversion box pop up. 
you want to click on where it says other encoding and you want to choose Unicode UTF-8. So that these steps are really important because if you don't do these ones exactly the same, Moodle is not going to notice your file. So when you're done, you want to click on OK. And now you save this as a plain text format. So what we want to do now is go into Moodle and I'm going to show you how you can import this document into your quiz bank. So I've switched over here to my Moodle course and now I'm ready to bring these questions into my quiz. So the first thing I do like to do for this is to create the quiz category that these questions will be imported into. And this way everything will stay organized. So in order for you to create the category in advance, you wanna to go to the upper right hand corner where you have your gear here on Moodle and under more, it will take you to this screen here. So you wanna scroll down until you see question bank and you want to click on categories. And we're going to scroll down until we see add category and we want to keep it under the pairing category of the default course, but we want to give it a name. So in this case, it's our midterm exam. So I'm going to name this category midterm exam. And now any questions that go under this category will be ones that I'm using for my midterm exam. So I'm going to click add category. And now that that's created, we can now go and import our questions. So if you have created your category in advance, like we just did, you could simply just click on import right here, right next to categories. But if by any chance, maybe you've created it at another time and you're coming back to it and you're here on the main screen, you can get to it by clicking on the gear in the upper right hand corner, pressing on more and under question bank, go directly into import. So there's two ways that you can get there. So now here we are, we're here in the import stage of our process and we want to select the correct file format. So in this case, it's going to be the Aiken format. And now we're just going to choose under general, it says import category, which means where do you want me to put these questions once I have finished this process? So this is why it's great to create the category in advance because you can now select midterm exam off of this list. Otherwise, all of those questions would just go directly into the default category and would sort of be all over the place. I prefer to make things as organized as possible so it's easier for you to find everything. Here under import questions from file, if you click choose a file, you have to find the file on your computer. So we're going to select choose file and then find the file on our computer where we saved our plain text file. So here I have under desktop, I have it saved under midterm exam and you wanna make sure you choose the plain text format, not the Microsoft Word document. So we're going to click on that exam and then it will be chosen for here and you click upload this file. From there, you just click on import and now it's going to show you that it's importing three questions from the file. What color is the sky? Who was the first president? The human body has 201 bones. And we're going to click on continue. And now those questions have been imported directly into our midterm exam category. So this was a successful import. If there were any issues with it, it would give you a big error message and you would pretty much know right away if there was something wrong with the formatting. So now how do we get these questions onto our quiz? So now this is going to follow the same format that you would follow if you were trying to put questions on a Moodle quiz. So here on the main page, I've already created the quiz in advance and I have my midterm exam here. And if I click on edit quiz, it will take me directly into my midterm exam where now I can add questions to it. So if I wasn't doing it through this import process, I could simply add a new question and manually do my questions. But since we have our questions already done, we're going to click add and then from question bank, and then it's going to ask us to select a category. So we're going to choose the midterm exam category and we're going to just click this button here at the top, which will select everything, and we'll click Add Selected Questions to Quiz. Now, if by any chance your quiz questions don't appear the way you want them to in numerical order right after you import it, don't worry because you can switch around your questions in this step here. So if by any chance I wanted this one here, I could simply drag and drop it and move the questions in the order that I want them to show up. I'm fine, it imported mine the way I wanted it to, so I don't have to do that. But if there is a specific circumstance where your questions import out of order, you can change it in this step here. 
So that's how you would take your quiz that you've compiled from a Word document and bring it into Moodle. Now, as you can see, the process does make it easier on you because you're not doing question by question, but it is very important to recognize as you're compiling your entire quiz inside of Word to be aware of the formatting and make sure it's in the exact way that it should be or else Moodle will not import it the right way.